Assalamualaikum Zakir Bhai. Uh, my name is Shakir and I'm a mechanical engineer student. I would like to ask you a question that uh, how can you prove to an atheist scientifically the existence of God? The brother has posed the question, how can you scientifically prove the existence of God Almighty, the existence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To especially to an atheist who does not believe in God. The first thing I will do is that I will congratulate that atheist. I congratulate him. You know why? If you look around us, he is a Hindu because father is a Hindu. He is a Christian because father is a Christian. Some Muslims are Muslim because their fathers are Muslim. This person, though he may be coming from a religious background, he does not believe in the false God which his parents attribute to. So he does not believe in God. I'm congratulating him because he's accepted the first part of the Shahada, the first part of the Islamic creed, La Ilaha, there is no God. Now my job is to prove illallah, but Allah, which I shall do inshallah. To the other people, I have to first remove the wrong concept of God and then prove the right concept of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Here half my job is done. He has already said La Ilaha. There's no God. Now I have to prove illallah, but Allah, which I shall do inshallah. You ask this atheist, that suppose there is an object, an unidentified, maybe a flying object, which no one in the world has seen. No human being in the world knows about this object. If it's brought in front of you, and if you're asked that who will be the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this unidentified object, you have to ask him the question. Who is the first person who will be able to tell you the mechanism of this new object which no one in the world has seen? After thinking for a while, he'll give the answer. The person who will be able to tell you the mechanism, the first person, is the creator of that object. Some may say manufacturer, some may say producer. Whatever they say, don't grapple with the word, accept it. It will be somewhat similar, either creator or producer or manufacturer. But remember what he has told you. Keep it in your mind. Then ask him the next question. How did the universe come into existence? How was it formed? He will tell you by the Big Bang Theory. Tell him the Quran mentions in Surah Ambiya, chapter 21, verse number 30, about the Big Bang Theory. Who could have mentioned this in the Quran 1400 years ago? So he will tell you, maybe it's a fluke. Don't argue with him. Next part of the question. We did not know that the light of the moon is reflected light. We came to know recently. You ask him, he'll tell you, yes, yes. The light of the moon is reflected light. It's not its own light. When we discovered, he will tell you recently, yesterday, 50 years back, 100 years back, yesterday in science. You tell him, the Quran mentioned that the light of the moon is reflected light 1400 years ago. Who could have mentioned that? Maybe somebody had a wild guess. Don't argue with them. Continue. We thought the sun was stationary. You ask him, is it stationary? You say, no. It's rotating and revolving. When you learn this, he will tell you yesterday, 50 years back, 100 years back. Quran mentioned this 1400 years ago. He will hesitate, but may say, maybe some intelligent person wrote it. Don't argue with him. Continue. How was the universe initially? What a celestial matter. He will tell you, it was smoke. How did you come to know? We have got proof, we have got evidence. You tell him, Quran mentioned this 14 years ago. Who could have mentioned that? He will hesitate. Don't wait for response, continue. Keep on posing question after question. All that I give in the lecture, keep on posing one question after the other. That, water cycle, how do we come to know about it? Quran mentioned 14 years ago about every living thing made from water. Who could have mentioned that? Quran speaks about botany, the male and female. Who could have mentioned that? Pose one after the other and ask the question, who could have written that? Then you tell him that there's a theory known as theory of probability. That if you have two choices, out of which one is right, the chances that you will make the correct choice just at random, is one in two. For example, if I toss a coin, 
It can either be heads or tails. The chances that I'll be right will be one in two. If I toss it twice, the chances that I'll be right both the times will be one upon two multiplied by one upon two, that is one upon four, 25% chance. If I toss it thrice, chances I'll be right all three times, one upon two multiplied by one upon two multiplied by one upon two, it's one upon eight, 12 and a half percent. A dice has got six sides. If I throw a dice, the chances that at random I'll be correct is one upon six. If I throw it twice, the chances that both the time I'll be right will be one upon six by one upon six, one upon 36. This is called as theory of probability. If I throw the dice twice and then toss a coin, all three being right will be one upon six by one upon six by one upon two is one upon 72. So you ask him, the chances may be if you ask, what is the shape of the earth? There are various shapes. Some may say it is flat, some may say it's triangular, some may say it is hexagonal, some may say pentagonal, some may say heptagonal, some may say square. Say there can be 10 shapes. Some may say it is round, it is spherical. The chance is that if anyone makes a wild guess, it being correct is one upon 10. The light of the moon, it can either be its own light or it can be reflected light. The chances that you make a wild guess and it being correct will be one upon two. The chances that both shape of the earth and light of the moon being reflected light, both being correct, if you make a wild guess, it will be one upon 10 multiplied by one upon two, it is one upon 20. What can the living creatures be made of? Some may say sand, some may say stone, some may say aluminium, some may say gold, say a thousand materials you can name. Some may say water, some may say silver, a thousand material. The chances that you make a wild guess, and one of them being right, according to mathematics, is one upon a thousand. The chances that all three being correct, the earth is spherical, light of the moon is reflected light, and every living creature created from water is correct, will be one upon 10, multiplied by one upon two, multiplied by one upon thousand. Answer comes to one upon 20,000, or 0.005%. Quran speaks about scientific science more than a thousand verses. In three verses, the chance comes to 0.05%. If you apply probability theory to all this being at random chance, it will come to zero negligible. And in maths, anything one in 10 raised to 50, it's equal to zero. So you ask your atheist friend, who could have written this? The only answer he can give you is his first answer, the creator, the manufacturer, the person who has produced it. That's the only answer, there's no other answer. What science is saying today is they are not eliminating God. They are eliminating models of God. La ilaha illallah. They are not eliminating God, but models of God. I hope that answers the question.